So as some of you probably already know, Ubuntu 24.04, codename Noble Numbat, was finally released several days ago, so I thought it would be a good idea to give a general overview of what you can expect compatibility-wise, especially with some of the videos I've previously made, such as my gaming guides, and my videos that cover AI and machine learning tools, such as NVIDIA's CUDA and AMD's ROCKM. So let's jump straight into it and first go over some of the benefits of this latest version. Unlike version 23.10, which was the previous version, this latest version is an LTS release, which stands for Long-Term Support. This means that security updates and maintenance will be available for an extended period of time, up to 10 years after its release. This is probably the biggest reason why you'd want to upgrade. But if you're currently using the previous LTS version, which is 22.04, then you don't need to worry yet, as it's not scheduled to lose support until 2027, so you have plenty of time to upgrade. But if you're planning to install Ubuntu on a new system, then you should probably go with this newer version. In addition to the longer support cycle, you'll also have access to the latest software versions. Each version of Ubuntu has its own set of repositories, where you can download and install software. By default, the repos in older versions of Ubuntu are limited to older versions of software. While it is possible to manually install newer software versions, you'll likely run into dependency issues, so it's not recommended for most people. Unless you use a sandbox application with Flatpak or Snap, but that's besides the point. Generally speaking, you'll want to be on the latest version of Ubuntu to have access not only to the latest software, but also drivers as well. But other than that, Noble Numbat doesn't really introduce any new game-changing features. There are some minor ones here and there, but overall your experience should be very similar to the previous version. Overall, my experience with 24.04 has been pretty smooth except for a few small hiccups, as I'll be showing here in a minute. But in general, if you're planning to install a fresh copy of an Ubuntu-based distro, then I suggest going with this latest version. However, if you're currently running version 22.04 or 23.10 and you want to upgrade to this latest version while keeping your system intact, then you'll need to wait a few months. The official upgrade will be available when 24.04.1 is released, which is scheduled for this August. While it is possible to force the upgrade today, this isn't recommended and isn't officially supported. According to this article, some people have bricked their operating system after trying to force the upgrade, so it's recommended just to wait for the official upgrade. Alright, so now let's take a look at the installation of a fresh copy. But I'll be installing Kubuntu rather than Ubuntu, since I prefer the KDE desktop. Now I won't be going into detail on the installation process, but rather I'll just be pointing out a few differences between this one and the previous version, and explain an extra step that you'll need to do to install third-party drivers. If you're new to Linux and want a detailed installation guide, then check out some of my previous videos where I've shown how to install a few different distros. I'll leave links in the video description to the latest ones where I showed how to install Kubuntu, along with several gaming applications such as Steam, Epic Games, GOG, and more. So the first thing I noticed about the installer is that it has a very clean and new look to it. Overall, they've definitely improved the aesthetics. As far as the procedure goes, it's almost identical as before except for this section, which is choosing which type of installation you want. In the previous version, you were given two choices, minimal installation or normal installation. In addition to that, there was also a box that you can check to automatically install third-party drivers and codecs, which made it easy to install Wi-Fi drivers and NVIDIA drivers, if you own an NVIDIA GPU. However, in the latest version, we now have three options, minimal installation, normal installation, and full installation. And the box to install third-party drivers is no longer here. 
Originally, I assumed that the full installation included the third-party drivers that were previously provided by that checkbox, but it turns out this isn't the case. The full installation only adds the software listed here, which isn't very useful for most people. So unless you need these, then I recommend sticking to the normal installation, and you can always add these later if you want. But when it comes to the NVIDIA drivers, it doesn't appear like there's any option here to automatically install them, so we'll need to manually install the drivers after the installation. So now the installation is complete and I've booted into it. The first thing I notice is that we have a new default background image, but other than that everything looks more or less the same, which is a good thing. Everything is familiar and easy to use. Now if you own an NVIDIA GPU then you'll want to install the drivers to get hardware acceleration for games and videos. And even if you don't own an NVIDIA GPU, then the following step is probably a good idea anyway, especially for Wi-Fi drivers. To do this, simply enter these commands. This screenshot is from my CUDA guide, and as you might have guessed, the first step to installing CUDA is to install the NVIDIA drivers. This will actually install the recommended drivers which might not be the absolute latest version, but are recommended for optimal stability. When that's done, simply reboot your system and now you'll have access to the GPU hardware. Let's try out some gaming applications starting with Steam. I decided to install Frostpunk as a test, and it ran beautifully just as expected. In fact, gaming in general should be better than the older versions of Ubuntu, because by default you'll have a newer GPU driver installed, which means better compatibility with the latest games and future titles. Now Lutris is another gaming application I've covered before, and I was able to install it without any issues using the exact same steps as I showed in my previous guide. However, the same cannot be said about Heroic Games Launcher and unfortunately there was a dependencies error when I tried to install it. But I'm willing to bet that this will be resolved very soon. At the time of making this video, the most recent version of Heroic Games is already 3 weeks old, so I'm sure they'll be releasing a new version very soon which will fix this bug. So this shouldn't be an issue moving forward. So now let's talk about support for Nvidia's CUDA and AMD's ROCKM. I've previously made guides on how to install these on Linux along with PyTorch, Stable Diffusion, and YOLO object detection. And I didn't have any issues installing CUDA using these exact same steps. YOLO object detection also worked flawlessly, so if you've been following my DIY smart security camera project, then you shouldn't have any issues running it on this latest version of Ubuntu. However, I did encounter a problem when trying to run Stable Diffusion Web UI. The developers for Web UI made it compatible with Python version 3.10. And you can see here in the instructions the steps to force this version of Python. The problem is that the latest version of Ubuntu doesn't have support for Python 3.10. By default, it comes with Python 3.12. And while it is possible to install Python 3.11, it's not possible to install version 3.10 as far as I can tell. To be honest, I didn't spend much time trying to debug this and there might be a solution to this, so if you're watching this and know a workaround then feel free to leave a comment showing how. But I think it might be easier just to use Comfy UI instead of Automatic 11.11 Web UI if you're interested in running Stable Diffusion. It's also possible that WebUI will be updated to be compatible with a more recent Python version at some point, but as of right now I suggest just using Comfy UI instead. Now when it comes to AMD's ROCKM, unfortunately there doesn't seem to be any support yet, but I'm quite certain that it's being worked on and that we'll see a new release soon. When they do add support, I'm pretty sure the process will be the same as my guide I already made for it, which is on my website. Chances are the only difference will be this line here, which specifies the version of Ubuntu and the version of Rockm to install. 
The rest should be the same, but when it is released, I'll be sure to update my guide to include it. But anyway, yeah, I think that's just about everything I wanted to cover today. If you have any thoughts or questions about this latest version of Ubuntu, then feel free to drop a comment. I'm sure you can find plenty more information about Noble Numbat on other channels, but I mainly just wanted to do a quick video outlining compatibility with some of the guides I've already made so far. The vast majority of software will be able to follow the same steps regardless of which version you're using. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.